Hello and welcome to Den of the Weird. Today I'm here with Joshua and we are going to talk about two player board games. Joshua, tell us a little bit about you for those who have not um, watched the Yes, I didn't watch the first one. Uh, I am a member of the uh, forum, uh, Pace Chewing Forum uh, by Steve and uh, used to own a board game shop. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to talk about board games any day. Any day, any time. Um, yeah, I, I'm Susanne Imaginario. I write weird fiction and uh, well, I write weird fantasy, not, no, I guess. And uh, now, I guess, run a YouTube channel. And I love board games. <laughs> almost, almost more than books. Almost. Oof. <laughs> All right, so first game. Um, I'll just pick from the pile. Yes. One that we both know and we both played a lot. Okay. Duel. Seven, Seven Wonders. Wonders Duel. All right. So, what can you tell people about this game? Obviously, it's a two-player game. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of the more uh, heavy, let's say, uh, competitive games. Yes. Uh, I used to uh, run some tournaments with it uh, back in the day. It's very easy to teach and uh, kind of hard to master. <laughs> I have yet to see someone win uh, the uh, way with... Uh, War, the soldiers. Really? Yes, I haven't seen a military uh, victory yet. Never play with me. Okay, okay. <laughs> so there are three ways uh, to win this game. You've got the military victory, uh, you've got the scientific victory, and uh, if those don't trigger, then you have the endpoint scoring and see who wins there. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I think, of the ones we chose... And that I know the more strategic one. What do you think? Yes, you can. There's a lot of planning ahead once you know the cards that are, because the game is played in three stages. So um, first, the the first uh, phase, you pretty much you just want to get as many resource cards, or I don't know how to call them, so yep. then you can Resources. buy the the cool stuff later. The second one is kind of touch and go. You're going to just try to build a couple of wonders, um, maybe screw your opponent a little bit, <laughs> get things set up for the next. And then the final round is just, yeah, you, you, you just try and take as much as you can and, and do, you just go all in. Yeah. Um, so I only played seven wonders like a couple of times years and years one. ago the yeah. original one because you need three pair at least three players i think yeah yeah, so, yeah but it's better with from five it's better with from five yeah yeah so we in my opinion we would never get a chance or very rarely have yeah. a chance to play yeah. so we we bought this as kind of a consolation price and um and for a long time we were like oh it's not the same yeah. It isn't. It is not card it drafting. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but eventually, you know, we give it a try. And now we have so many games recorded. It's it's ridiculous. I, I don't, even, don't even want to count. Yes. It's amazing that it has the uh, the board is different every time because you're placing random cards. Mm -hmm. And you cannot predict which card is going to come. You know for each age, uh, for each mm -hmm. round, uh, what cards are in the deck. But you don't know when they are coming, and you don't want to open a secret card for someone <laughs> when you <laughs> take a card off the stack. Yeah, that's another saying. The way the cards are organized, yes. you only see a few of them, and then as you as you take your cards, you flip them over, and new cards are revealed. Yeah, you you always go try to go the <laughs> around. Yes, yes, make <laughs> the, the other person the uh, screw up. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, have you ever played any of the expansions? Not yet, no. So we have uh, the first expansion is the Pantheon, 
Yes. And of course, I had to get because it's has gods. Um, and I think I don't want to say anything stupid or wrong. So it's basically it has just this little board that goes around the top, and then you uh -huh. have the gods. And uh, there's nothing new to them. It's just another way to get um, stuff like you can get a card from the discard pile or Aphrodite just gives you points. Um, you can build a wonder. It's, it's all the same stuff you can get through building wonders, but it's just, it's just easier. The thing that uh, captivated me, let's say, about the gods is that it's they are from several pantheons. So, so mm -hmm. you know, we have we have Zeus, but we have Ra. Oh, uh, Zeus is awesome. So it's part of my inspiration for the Dark Um So Hyzes, uh, we have Anubis, Baal, Tanit, Astarte, Nisaba, Enki. Anyway, uh, for those who like gods, yes, it has Would nothing say... to do with them. <laughs> so yeah. it's nothing to do with mythology, but I, I really think it it's was cool a really good. It was a good addition to the game. Yeah. It kind of it actually it added. Yeah, an extra that was layer. my question. Would does it add to the game? Yes, I think so. Okay. Uh, this expansion, yes. Now, there's the other expansion. She's Agora. Yes, I see. Uh, try not to make a mess. It, it's rated a little higher, but it has less people who own it so yeah so the agora ah, okay. and this is kind of mimicking or inspired by the roman senate i think mm. um i didn't like this one we played it a few times and uh, uh yeah it it um uh, it adds a lot of what uh, i think it's unnecessary um stuff bloat it it, yeah, it bloats. Yeah, yeah, it 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 detracts you from the main. Um, yeah, sorry, Freya no is excited. Problem. It attracts <laughs> you from the main goal of the game, the the main mm -hmm. system. Um, yeah. The gods was just another way to get the same things. This is a completely different uh, goal, I suppose. And yeah. Uh, yeah, we played a few times, and then we realized. Whenever we talk, oh, what going to play tonight? I'm going to play Duel and be like, eh, it didn't feel like playing. Uh, and kind of like, so we, we stopped and now we're playing again. So yeah. Excellent. Either vanilla or just with gods. So it, it didn't yeah. work for me. Um, if if people enjoy this edition, please let us know in the comments. It's just I, I played vanilla at least 30 times and I still don't have the feeling that I need to add something to it, but that's <laughs> just me. <laughs> you know, this, this was kind of during a lockdown. We were playing pretty much every day. So we <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Try different things. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you, if you play it, I think probably more than a hundred times then you'll be like, Hmm, I need more strategy in this game, please. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know how many times we played. All I know is that the little notebook that comes with it. And then yes. another one comes with the expansion. Those are both filled. We had to print more. So, yeah, we stopped counting. We, we just used regular paper. <laughs> I love it when, when they come with the little, with the little yes. notepads. Yes, mm. I use the first one and then the rest regular paper always. <laughs> um, can't help it. You have to keep but, everything pristine. Yes. Side, side question. Do you yes. sleeve your cards? Uh, no, this game isn't sleeved. No. The, I have sleeved games, but I think um, it's not a lot. It's not a lot. I, mm. I think 10 games maybe in the entire collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, I understand why, but it always makes me very uncomfortable playing a game, you know, someone else's game. Yeah. You know, if, if they went to the trouble of um, sleeving the cards, I'm I'm even afraid to touch them. You know, shuffling very carefully. Just I don't want to do anything. <laughs> Would you recommend this game as a first game? For yes, players? absolutely. I think it's wow. it's quite. Okay. I would. Yeah, I would. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I know, knew very little about it when I first played. And I remember it was quite easy to learn. You know, it had a couple of training games, but the rules are pretty self-explanatory. If, if you have a basic understanding of, um, uh, well, how... How a game is supposed to work. Uh, no, no, this type of game is supposed to work. And I'm missing the terms. Um, yeah. What do you call when you, you have to... Because you're not actually accumulating resources. You are accumulating... Um, your access to resources, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Resource management. Yeah. So okay. if you understand that, you, you don't need to know, you know, the gods or the the wonders or just. I'm sorry, but I I'm not going to agree with the. This is going to be a first game for for people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Explain why. The uh, rule set. The first time you read it, the, the rule book is convoluted. And, uh, that knows the game to explain it to you, then it's a perfect first game. But if you just go to the shop and you buy it and you start reading the rules, the rules are not that great. Oh, it's an amazing God. game to play and it works amazingly well, but it's not well written in my opinion. I found no complaints. So that's interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's an interesting yeah. perspective. I've, okay. I've had a complaint in the store. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, I, I, I believe you. Um, again, yeah. I, uh, I, never had, I never had to explain the game to anyone, so there's that. Yeah, the, the game is from uh, uh, 2015. You started playing in? Uh, it was around lockdown, I think, maybe a bit before that. So the game was at least almost five years old by then. Mm -hmm. Most people would have played it, indeed. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. But it's it's an amazing game, and I would fully recommend it to anyone who wants to play a mm. two-player game that is competitive and yet approachable and mm -hmm. works with different strategies. There is nothing, in my opinion, overpowered mm -hmm. or underpowered. So. Yeah, several ways to win. Um, yeah. And it's it's quite a decent length, because most two-player games they tend to be quite short. And this mm -hmm. one still has a little bit of, yeah. of mid to it. Yeah. And... It says a half an hour, but I would say half an hour to an hour if you are playing against someone who knows the game really thinks about strategy. Yeah, it's usually half an hour. <laughs> yeah. An hour. Yeah. <laughs> Analysis paralysis. <laughs> there we go again. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. So next that's one? Ravens. Next one. Tell me one of yours that I've never played before. Okay, one of mine. Oh, let's start with Hive. Yeah. Small bag. Small um, bag. It, yes, it is an abstract game with tiles, and they are very, very hard. It has bugs on them. And in this game, we all each have the same number of bugs the same bugs and we have a queen bee if i can find her the first try it's always not the first try but uh, the tenth try the queen bee okay so we have one in white and one in black um each turn we will take one of our tiles and we shall put it next to another tile so it connects mm -hmm. When this connection is made, is made, we call it a hive. This cannot be severed. Uh, there needs to be one connection between white and black at all times. Right. Um, the objective of the game is to enclose this one of the other player. So the queen bee uh -huh. needs to be enclosed. Yes. Doesn't matter mm. your tiles or someone else's. If she is fully entrapped, you lose the game. During our turn, we have two things we can do, or we take another tile from our pile and place it next to something else. Or if the queen has been put on the game, so it's, uh, you can put the uh, queen first, second, or third um, turn on mm -hmm. the board. After, after that, it doesn't matter because you need to place her in the first three turns and mm -hmm. after she uh, has been placed, you can start moving pieces. 
okay. your own pieces, of course. And everything has a different move set. So the ant can move across the whole board. He can go like, Wee! and then stop somewhere. I have no idea what this is called, but it can climb onto other bugs and keep them in place. So it only moves one. Uh, the spider moves three and always three. So this is a hard one uh, to use. Uh, grasshopper does something cool. It hops over everything until the next one. And what makes this game so amazing? Well, you are constantly adjusting your strategies. So it's very abstract. It's, it's like a game of chess, but you know... In chess, everything moves a certain way. This game has that mm -hmm. as well. And it happens often that you're not paying attention to one of the bugs that has a certain type of moveset that, oh, I didn't see that one. Yeah, you lost the game because your B has been enclosed. Right. It is easy to set up. You can even play it in the pool because it's just plastic. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need a board. You can take it anywhere. You can throw with it. Uh, somewhere <laughs> it doesn't really matter um i think all the abstract games i have this one has been played the most except for the one that uh, is coming next uh but yeah it's it's very competitive uh you have also have it on computer as a as an app mm -hmm. uh i know people who play that uh in in tournaments Mm -hmm. so, yeah i don't know what else i need to add to this game it's it's simple uh, uh, easy to learn hard to master that's what i would say okay it's definitely on the list <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just to play when you get here yeah well <clears throat> i would read, i think i would try and learn it beforehand <laughs> uh -huh. if you're traveling perfect Perfect game mm -hmm. to take with you. Okay, so um, that's Hive, and I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go with Emotep. Yes. So uh, another dual game. So another dual or two-player version of um, of a board game. I, unlike Seven Wonders, I never played the original um, Emotep, so I don't know how it relates. Um, looking at the pictures, not not much. Um, this was uh, uh, my husband surprised me with this one because you know I like games with the uh, you know Egyptian mythological <laughs> <laughs> Egyptian thing, yeah, yeah. Um, Greek Egyptian pretty much. And but he liked the cover apparently because it, it it's really like you know husband and wife having a, a spat of sorts. And um, and yeah, it was one of those games very easy to learn so i don't even know how to explain it um terrible at explaining games yeah um summary is so fine it looked a bit so you this is the board um i don't know if you can see so it's yeah, yeah. It has a grid so you you place your man as if you're playing knots and crosses um okay worker placement yeah yeah and it's the similar grids to knots and crosses then you have these little things, your little ship that uh, attaches to the board and your tiles yep. going here. And uh, whenever you have two or more little meeples on, in line, you can unload the ship and you get the tiles that are there, two or three, depending on, uh, on how many meeples are on the board. Now, the thing is, they don't all have to be your meeples. Actually, none of them needs to be a meeple, I, I don't think. So if uh, your opponent has a meeple there in the middle, then he also gets the reward from the boat, the corresponding reward. So you have to be careful where to place them and when to unload them and in which direction, because you can screw up, you know, your opponent has the meeple placed because he wants the top resource yeah. from that boat. But if you unload from the other side, then he's going to get the bottom one. And, um, it can be quite so grid move, uh, grid placement, as in the, the area where it's placed, is very important. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you have uh, my only issue with this game is that it's not very replayable. 
um, you have you score your points basically in only eight different ways or four different ways with the A and B side that you can alternate. So for example, you can build a pyramid and it's how many pyramid tokens you have, or you can build two pyramids, but only the the smallest pyramid counts. And with, the th with the stuff you get from the boat. Yeah, with the stuff you get from the boat, okay. little stones, or you you have the statues. Yeah, it's it's very simple in that regard. It doesn't give you a lot of options um, in terms of scoring. It's uh, it's it's more about the strategy. You yeah. have some wild tiles that allow you to take to tokens di di directly without unloading, or allows you to unload multiple times or place more than one meeple at a time. So I think it's it's more a strategy game than uh, the the strategy is worth more than the points. Yeah, but the board is always the same. Though no, just it, it the placement of your bo boats can can change. No. The boats remain the same. The tokens are random, and then your oh, your board nice. has two sides. So you yeah okay. And 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 that's that. Like I said, yeah. we we played like four or five games, and we start repeating ourselves. So it, it's not something that we play often because it does yeah. get repetitive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Other than that, it's pretty fine. It takes about twenty minutes to play. Sounds like fun. Yeah, very simple to assemble. Very simple to put away. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. All right. Next one. So I, I, I would recommend. I, I think this one is much simpler than the um, yeah. for a beginner. Sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. So then I'm starting to say maybe I'm just too used to games. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. You're a, you're an expert player now. Oh, which is yes. mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm an expert in two player. Yeah. What was the next, next one? one? Uh, next one, one that we both played. All I right. guess. Odin's. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Did you did you know this is the second edition? Uh, I. You uh, have the second edition. Yeah. yeah. It's the same. No, yeah. no, I there is there is a it. first edition. Uh, the difference? Uh, <laughs> it doesn't look as great. <laughs> I wouldn't have bought the first edition. I I, I love the presentation of this game. I yes. like I like that it opens almost like a book. Yes, you know, and the um, feel the feel of the cover, the feel of the manual, the cards. Mm -hmm. They're, they're oh, so Just, well done, artwork. Mm -hmm. So cool. And, yeah. and then and then you open the box, you know, the big box, and there's just yeah, insert there's nothing which inside. Which is also something that is not always there. An insert. This was quite a surprise. I don't know why we got it. I guess it be, again because Odin. And then I was very happy to see that there was a, you know, the Loki cards. Loki cards, yes. Uh, without the Loki cards, the game would be boring. It would yeah, be of just, course, because it would be it a would random the race game like. Um, uh, sorry, is it sorry? The one with the you, you roll a die and then you have four pawns that need to be in a row. Yeah, no bell ringing. Yes, it's a very very old game, uh, <laughs> but uh, it would be very very. It it is random at the moment, but the Loki cards add the the strategy element. It was missing. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do do you want to explain people? How to play because sure. there's so much bad at it. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, so we have the two ravens. You can uh, tell their names. Uh, Hugin and Mugen. Yes. Am I pronouncing them right? So. Uh, Hugin and Munin. Munin. So. Yes. Like and place. they are traveling uh, across, I think it's 16 cards that we uh, open up. Yep. And they have uh, landscapes on them. Let me see what the cards are. Well, there we go. Mm -hmm. Our artwork again, amazing. Simple, Simple. but it works. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have cards with those artworks on them, singularly, and uh the Loki cards. So during our turn, we can uh put as many cards as we want 
on the board and say like, okay, I'm going over this terrain, forest terrain. You need mm -hmm. one card if it's forest. But if you don't own the card that is uh, on the terrain, like, oh, it's a nice terrain, two of the same do the same job. Mm -hmm. the, then you have the Loki cards, and mm -hmm. they have actions on them that would help you or screw the other person. <laughs> and the objective of the game is trying to get as fast as possible from your end to the other player's end, and the other player is doing the same moving over the country in a race. Mm -hmm. First one uh, back home wins. Yep. Um, that's it. Super simple, super fun. Yes. This one, this one is one I would recommend if you are like, I'm getting into games, this is the one I would recommend. Yeah, I, 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 I dare say it's probably the simplest one of, uh, of, of the, the list. Bunch. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, anyone can can play it, and it's my only complaint is that it's it's very fast. We can play it in like ten minutes. That's perfect. I, yeah, but but then it's, first game. it's over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But then you play again. I mean, yeah. No, it's it's uh, an amazing game. This is also uh, not that hard to find now because it's in reprint, mm -hmm. and I think it just costs about twenty euros or twenty five. Yeah, it's, it's very cheap. affordable. Yeah. Yes. So high recommendations for that one. Mm -hmm. um, next, we have. So I'm gonna tell you about Prowler's Passage. Yes. We were actually playing it last night. Not that we need <laughs> a remember a reminder, but I wanted to. You know, I was, I was thinking about it and I was like, how am I gonna explain this? <laughs> Uh, so Prowler's Passage, <clears throat> Again, I don't remember why we got it, uh, but it's, um, hmm, how to put it, um, you are basically trying to, well, it's accumulate victory points, of course, but it works on, on two ways. You're trying to, to get the longest or the most efficient route through the city, if that makes sense. Um, and then there's a track where it's kind of a tug of war. It's always going back and forth to your opponent. Okay, getting ahead of myself. So we, we have your tiles that you arrange. I think it's uh, six of them. And each tile has an, a city area. So you have like the the yellow, I think it's the bank, then the blue, the white, it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't know the names of the areas. They yeah. are all, for, for us, it's yellow, blue, white, in this there case. And there's, there's brown and pink. Um, <laughs> terrible. So you assemble, okay. so every type it's different in terms of replayability. It's very, um, it's very easy. So you create, I'm going to put two together, and you can see they have these little lines in the middle. Yeah. And that's where you put the little bars, little sticks, make kind of like roads or tunnels that go okay. through. And uh, there's tokens. The image is very fade, but there's a little round thing. And you put your tokens there. Random yep. tokens. Um, even though the colors are similar, it doesn't mean that the blue is going to end up on the blue or the pink on the pink. It's just... Yeah, yeah. And they, worth, they, they are worth something on their own. But what they do whenever you, you put your little um, Treat on stick, it, your line, yeah. <laughs> and you put your little stick down. Um, you usually get an advancement because you have a little track um, and little tokens go here. And whenever you get the correspondent color, it goes up one or two. Mm -hmm, and then if mm -hmm. the opponent um, places these little or builds a tunnel or whatever to the outside, it pushes down. And uh, okay. what I like about this game is that there's 
you know, there's a mid game scoring. You, you place uh, all but five of your six and you stop yeah. and you count. So even the, the score sheet has, has two. Another score sheet. <laughs> oh yeah. It, it has two columns um, for the one for the mid game and the other for the final. And it's amazing how, how things can change. Just because you are winning halfway through, it doesn't mean you're gonna you're gonna win. You can still Yeah. Um but for such a small game, there's so many things you have to consider. Um it's your path because you are always trying to get the longest route. It's how many tokens of the same color you're gonna need. It's making sure because you only score those tokens if you have the correspondent color for them to score. So it's making sure that you have something to score. And it's seriously, it gets to the point where it's a tug of war. Yeah, Just, yeah. It, it feels like you're you're trying to get control over something. Yeah. So it's a very competitive game. Oof. Uh, like extremely competitive in that regard. My, my husband says it's stressful. Um, uh -huh. I love it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> Make of that what you will. I don't know. I, I think it's fine. I think it's fun. I need to try it then. <laughs> it's very simple. I don't think it's very expensive. Um, it it takes sprints? a little bit of um, of a learning effort because, like I said, there's too many things you need to consider, and the dynamic um, it's it's not that common. Um, it's easy to learn, but yeah, there's too many little things you have to consider with each play. Every time you put your little your little stick down, you, you have to consider a lot. And mm. it helps if you are able to um, I plan ahead. But to plan ahead, you need to know the game and you need to know yeah. what you'll need. And uh, there's a lot of counting. So making sure that you always have an option to get the color you want back. Anyway, it's um, it's tricky. Let's put it this way. <clears throat> Divisive. <laughs> tricky. Sounds intriguing. Yeah, I think it makes sense because you are supposed. I think you're supposed to be a thief or something. Yeah, it's almost like thief against thief. Um, yeah, steal the best items, create the longest passages, yeah. and control districts. Yeah. So it, it for a for a two player game it actually it packs a lot and it keeps you busy and, uh, and there's a lot to keep you engaged. It takes about yeah twenty minutes maybe for us now I'll say half an hour if you're learning. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of luck involved. So, okay. Yeah. A first game or not? First game, I, I would say not. Hmm. Uh, this one, you, you really need to understand um, a few things, a few yeah. game dynamics. Even though they are all simplified, you know, to, to the basics, you still need to to understand how things relate. Yeah. To, to make them work. So you should get it. It's, it's I should very get competitive. It. Very uh, competitive. <laughs> yes, yes. I don't have enough games. <laughs> Never enough games. No. Okay. Next one. Next one. Which it's one? you. Aha. All right. Kamisado. Mm -hmm. So, I would have recommended Hive as a first game if this game did not exist. Uh, because this is also an abstract one. And um, this one is the difficulty-wise highest rated one of the ones we were talking about. And in my opinion, it's the easiest one to teach. Okay. But uh, one thing you need you need the game that. board and and the game in front of you to actually learn it. But yeah. Um. This is a very simple grid. We are going to place these little towers. It ha they all have a color on the top, yeah, because of the lighting, not so great. Let's see if you can see that this one is blue. 
Mm -hmm. So each one has a line. I have this line. The other player has the bottom line, like in chess. And blue needs to go on the blue. Right. And we do this for the whole line. So every color will be re represented. And what do these things do? So red on red. One of the players decides which color the other player needs to use. So he says to me, you can choose red. You're going to use red. Red, doesn't matter which color, can move forward, always forward, not horizontal or back, or sideways forward. The color on which I end with this color, so I, if I end here on the board, you can see which color it is. Mm -hmm. brown. Like brown, yep. Yeah. If I end on brown, the other player needs to use his brown right. tower. If he ends on red, I need to use the red one again. Or if he ends on green, I need to use my green one. And the objective of the game is get with one of these to the other side of the board. So hit the other player's side. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to get an opening and then slide right in there by using I stop on orange. Now he has to use orange. If he stands on red, I slide in something like that. Very easy. Um, I used to have this game uh, in my shop behind my counter. So if someone comes in the shop, I told this story before, mm -hmm. and they're new and they're trying to find out uh, where can I play, and I'm trying to find out what kind of player this is. I use this game, I set it up, I explain it to them, I show them some moves because you can get blocked if you are blocked. Then the color you're standing on is the color the other person uses again, so you lose a turn. It's very easy, but then I understand the player. This has replaced chess for me. Every pawn, so every tower, has the same move set. You just move forwards, mm -hmm. never horizontal or backwards, and the color on which you end is the color the other person plays with. Or just trying to get to the other side. There are extras in the game, so you have these little tokens. Uh, so these towers have place for a token, and then you put the token in there. If this is the tower that got to the end, we reset the game. This one gets a token, and now he can push one. I never use this because it disrupts the, the fact that every tower is the same in the game. Now this one can push one. That's that's We're not on equal footing mm -hmm. anymore. So the, the other mm. player has a disadvantage to me. I never use mm -hmm. this. It's something I keep in the box and I don't care about. Strategy-wise, on par with uh, chess, if you have the right person in front of you. If if someone knows this game, I right. have seen one time or two times that people like block each other in such a way that no one can win. So that's wow. like, well done. You broke the game. <laughs> Sounds like the type of game that would make me angry. <laughs> but this one, yeah, this one is definitely if if you're starting in, into games and you're like, I want something abstract like chess, but easier to learn, easier to teach, hard to master. This is the game. Camisado gets the thumbs up for me, but it is it's quite expensive for what you get. I think mm -hmm. it's 35 euros uh, at the moment. And it's a hard board. Right. The more mm -hmm. times you open this, uh, mm -hmm. my previous version has cracked. So uh, I had to buy a new one. <clears throat> but it's easier. Yeah. <laughs> I bought a new one. <laughs> There's also a bigger version. There's a maxi version as well. And it has two more colors. So if you want more mayhem, buy that one. <laughs> Okay, definitely add it to the list. Um, just looking. Yeah, all right. So last one. Yes, the classic. The, well, I, I haven't heard about it until pretty much <laughs> talking to you. So uh, I have you to You're blame welcome. for one of the most 
embarrassing uh, scores in my life. Um, we we're talking about patchwork. This is the most sold game in my shop. Was the most sold game in my shop. It looks so cute. It looks so simple. It looks so much fun. And um, yeah, minus 11 I scored um, the first game. Seven, yeah. I didn't know it was possible. And um, yeah, tell us about it. Yeah. <laughs> I've only played like five times, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, we have a track uh, like... Uh, we're Sorry. following a track. If you can show it, that would be easier because mine is still in uh, Belgium. Try not to make a lot of noise. Yes. You have a track with two yes. sides. Yes, two sides. An easy one. one, and yes, that's the the one you can <laughs> uh, see what is happening. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, it's it's kind of a time track, so um, we have our pawns on it, and then when we buy, and there's a circle around the entire uh, boards, mm -hmm. we have each our own boards. Uh, when we yes, buy so one of three... We each have a board. Yes. So if I manage to take the other one off the yes. box, it would be great. Um, two colors, okay. very simple. Yep, very simple. <laughs> and around that board, those boards... We have lots of little pieces. Like in Tetris. Yeah, it's kind of like playing Tetris. So you yes. Have, uh, oh, this is not a Tetris piece, but this is. Yeah. And during our turn, we can buy three of those pieces who are next to each other. And if mm -hmm. we buy one of those three, we move uh, the pawn that is next to it on that spot. We pay with time, moving our pawn on that circle track. And we pay in uh, buttons. We need to have enough buttons. Those buttons are your currency, your points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never forget that. If you run out of buttons, <laughs> you do not have points. Yep. Uh, we're trying to cover our entire board, uh, each on our own, uh, with those uh, Tetris-looking uh, um, patches. And for each that is not covered, for each uh, square that is not covered, it's minus two points as well. Game ends if both our pawns are in the center of the uh, time track uh, board. Mm -hmm. And now we count points. Mm -hmm. Very easy. <laughs> Very easy. Yeah, it took no effort at all to, to learn. And um, yeah, I, I just miscalculated because I was under the impression that uh, it would be minus one point for each um, square. So I just had a surprise. Uh, not that it would help. I, I think I would still be in the negative, but you know, it would be yes. a little bit less embarrassing. You're trying to score the, 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 the patches with the buttons on them to get more buttons. You can always mm -hmm. give up time. So each square you uh, progress mm -hmm. on the track without buying something, you get a button as well. So you can mm -hmm. save up. <clears throat> Um, it's it's simple. Um, I think they reprinted the new version because there is there was one um, patch that is overpowered according to statistics. I don't know which one it was, but there was one that was kind of if you get that one in the beginning, you're winning more by zero point something percent. Your chance of winning is is higher. Yeah, they they managed to calculate that uh, after oh. thousands and thousands of games. Uh, and it's a new Rosenberg game. Mm -hmm. The man behind Agricola and Caverna and uh, a feast for Odin, which is after this game, a feast for Odin. So the the, the okay, I can and see the, the, the inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. He also created Cottage Garden after this game, which is also with the Tetris kind of things. So this is the game. I love Odin's Ravens. I love almost every game we, we talked about. Uh, I love Camisado, but starting, starting from zero, like a ticket to ride, Patchwork is, is the number one mm -hmm. for everybody. It doesn't matter what you like. Patchwork yeah. Animal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also a, a more of a couples game I, I found. Why? 
that most people who bought it in the shop were couples like we're, oh, okay. we're looking for a game for two of us uh we were just starting and a lot of couples bought patchwork as their first game ever <laughs> well it is it's a good I... random information <laughs> random information um like i said i haven't played it often enough to evaluate how um how re replayable it is so far yeah it, it's never the same of course because the pieces are arranged yeah. differently yeah. um but yeah i i don't know if there's expansions for it or, or anything don't i reckon that there's only so enough. much you 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 can do yeah. so it's it's a very simple game you are building your quilt or whatever it is and, and that's yes. that takes about 20 20 minutes half an hour depending on yeah how Spot how on. tidy yeah. you want to make it yeah it's very good yes you, you can make mistakes <laughs> a lot of mistakes yeah and it's very frustrating when the, the opponent takes the patches you need and they don't need yeah. the patch and uh yeah I was saving for that form. Why? Uh, <laughs> it's it's a very good game. Played it at least fifty times. Overall ranking in in Board Game Geek one hundred and eleven. Oh, which is not bad. No, it's not bad. It at used all. to be in the top one hundred when it mm -hmm. came out. I even 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 checked the other ones. Don't. <laughs> unknown two-player games <laughs> that yes, would be the title yes. of the video yes mm -hmm. I, I think seven wonders duel is still top 10 uh hive is the other one that is very high and then we go downhill from there any yeah. honorable mentions any games that you like to include in this list off the top of my head way too many uh i would say another uh abstract game uh, uh quarto Quart yeah quarto <laughs> maybe for next time yep yeah i uh, uh, almost included um king domino for two players just it, it doesn't get simpler than that i don't think well it does but... another bruno catala game he uh is also the one who designed the dual game for seven wonders Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, and I hope this uh, list helped people uh, looking for two-player games because mm -hmm. it's a solid list, in my opinion. If you only have two players or you don't have a lot of time, yeah, I think these are good options. Easy to assemble, quick to play, easy to put away. You know, no fuss. Um, I hope it helps. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Add your suggestions. We are always looking for games. <laughs> At least I am. I don't have money. <laughs> but you you want to learn about, you know, you still go oh. and check what, what yes. what's new. Yes. Yeah, there you go. If, window shopping. Yes, yes. Adding to the FOMO. Yes, that's what I do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, hopefully next time we'll talk about um, games that are also good, if not better, two players. It should be a, right. an exciting one. Yes. All right. Thank you for watching and uh, until next time. <laughs>